Hello, so third day today. Um, definitely feeling still a lot better. Um, hit another meeting today, which was good. Got a lot, of, got got a lot of good feedback again from it. But um, what this video is about is um, basically I I watched through uh, Desert's video, which I feel very guilty about because at the time when I was in the madness, I didn't really realise how much I was upset enough, which was not really fair after all that she done for me. But I kind of, in my defence a little bit, this was kind of my experience around from the day she dropped me off at rehab to getting back from where I'm from, basically. So day one, um, yeah, they dropped me off and they were all, I mean, I don't know if Des has mentioned the rehab, but I'm not, I'm not in any way trying to put the rehab down because every person I met in there, a lot of them had changed their life around. But, and they were welcoming, they were accepting, there's a lot of love to give, but I didn't realise it was going to be so Christian based, which I am a Roman, a Catholic, Roman Catholic, and I did go to church every Saturday night when I was growing up. If I didn't, I'd have been grounded. But I didn't realise it was going to be like waking up, having to go and sing church songs every day. You can't watch like anything on YouTube unless it's related to God. The same with the books and all things like this. And I didn't really take into account. I, I thought I was going to be a lot more stronger willed with the smoking. But if I could have woke up and had a fag and a cup of coffee, I'd have probably still been in there but that was not allowed. So yeah, after about three or four hours of being in there, I did try to escape. And it's not funny, I shouldn't laugh. I, well, I didn't try to escape, I tried discharging myself. Um, so they took me, they took me to, um, where was it? Where was it? This is Northampton? Northampton train station. Um, with three pound 50 in my pocket. <laughs> which, you know, wouldn't get me very far considering it's about a three hour journey on the train home. Um, and I I begged them if I could ring Desiree on a pro, on a pay phone. So they, they give me another pound, give me Desiree's number. And I rang her and in the process of walking from the car to the pay phone, it was quite funny really, because I'd only been out the car for 30 seconds in this guy come up to me and said do you fancy three for a hundred and I kind of looked at him and went no I don't because I've only got three pound fifty in my pocket <laughs> um no I wouldn't have anyway because I was past that by that point but um yeah um then I rung Desiree on the payphone and she kind of said you know I'm not going to talk to you if you if you do this go through with this and I'm like you're stronger than this give me a bit of motivation and I kind of thought, no, let, like, let's try again. Let's, and luckily, the, the lovely guys that took me to the train station said, right, we'll take you back then and continued from there. And I got my head down um, and they stuck me on a, a Librium, which basically stops your withdrawals, like shaking and fitting. Um, but I didn't realise as soon as they stuck me on these Librium, um, I couldn't even go to the toilet without being watched, which was quite intrusive of my privacy. And, you know, I, I didn't really like this part of it. The doors were locked at 10 o'clock. I couldn't even go outside if, you know, you wanted a bit of fresh air. Even to, to get out of my bed, I had to wake up the guy who was kind of looking after me, who was also a previous addict. Um, and yeah, it was just very, it, it, it felt like it felt more than if you'd been locked inside a prison cell to be honest and you could only have one phone call after two weeks um which i think you get more if you go to prison phone call wise um and just there's a lot of factors around it which i'm sure well there's people in there who it worked for but for me i just i really don't think i just stuck it out and well obviously i didn't um so i couldn't there's no obviously no smoking which I knew this, but I didn't feel like it was going to be a big great on me. Um, no running, I couldn't play guitar, it was only Christian songs. Um, 
and yeah, like, but there, there was there was plenty of positives. Um, over time, the longer you stayed there, so like the, the longer you stayed there, the more freedom you got, the more family time you got. Um, and there was plenty of success stories in there, plenty of people who had changed their lives. So there was even a couple that had met in there and had a kid and were still in there after five, six years. But to me, it felt like a cult. I'm not going to lie. And, you know, I'm not belittling the place. Like I say, it's all free of charge, which is a positive for anyone. And if you're in that place, it's definitely worth a try because, you know, there's a lot of other... Um, rehabs out there which I'm sure a lot of families can't afford and stuff like that so yeah so the next morning um, well I, I then spent the next day but because of the Librium I, I basically spent about two days sleeping straight in this rehab um, and then the next morning I woke up and I just couldn't hack it and by 10 11 o'clock in the morning I then discharged myself again, and they they said to me, they said, Rob, this time if you do it again, they said we can't take, we can't have you back for at least three weeks. And I was, I was pretty positive. I was like, well, I can't stay, I can't stay. So I just had to leave. And they obviously took me to Northampton the first time, which I thought this is a bit of a rough area because obviously I'm from Cambridge. So I thought, well, maybe you could take me to the town this way. It was a place called Redditch, and. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, that was just as bad. It was like a nightmare, this place. Um, yeah, I turned up in Redditch again with £3.50 in my pocket. Um, and then I went to the shops and obviously £3.50 don't really get you a bottle of wine, so I had to borrow a few. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think the first point I kind of realised that uh, Desiree had, had kind of, well, it was kind of my fault but she'd gone off with my phone. So there I am in Redditch uh, with a list of numbers in my back pocket and £3.50, well, not anymore because I spent it on wine, but £3.50 to begin with in my other pocket. So I try, I went into, uh, she, she's got a phone list of all the numbers in different places. There was Vets, there was Lloyd's Bank, um, Lloyd Bank. Bank, there was hospitals, there was random police strangers station, on the street, there was people. police stations. <laughs> anywhere I could go to and try and talk to someone and but I, I felt I think it's it spiraled me more out of control um, it spiraled me into a right mess and yeah I tried admitting myself to hospitals um, but because I was so intoxicated and I think a bit of a mix with taking Librium for the two days I was in there it, it started making me black out a lot I'd wake up with people, like circles of people around me, prodding me, seeing if I was still alive. Um, I, I saw psychiatrists in the hospital. I did, I really wanted to get sectioned. And this is only, I don't know, I'm still not really 100% sure how it works in hospitals, but years ago when I struggled with addiction and got myself clean for one year and two months, um, I got sectioned off the streets. Um, like that and taken away for a few weeks and kind of got myself back on track with my mental health but this time for whatever reason they wouldn't um um i i tried which is not a very nice thing to talk about i tried jumping off a bridge onto a dual carriageway but got everyone stopped on the dual carriageway and pulled me off and loads of police officers turned up and took me straight back to the hospital where i then got assessed again um, and then I, I, I don't know, I, I, can't, I think they kind of just had enough of me. But I also, I bumped into some very messed up characters in Redditch. Um, I watched someone having a heroin overdose and no one had an oxycetylene kit to kind of bring them back. And I don't think anyone really was in the right mind. I mean, I'm sitting there drunk trying to get people to do stuff and his head was going like this. And they just held a, a lighter under his nose until obviously the burn kind of flicked his head back and they just kept doing this until he come round and watching stuff like that it, it wasn't nice it kind of took me back to obviously I, I was never really using heroin but it took me back to the days when you were being surrounded by people who were doing that because obviously cracking heroin come toe in toe um I also witnessed someone outside the, the hospital um get uh, get um he got 
told that he was going to get done for attempted murder. And in hearing this, he decided to pull out a bottle of Lucas Aid full of petrol and set himself alight and got chased around the car park by the nurses with fire blankets. And I just, at that point, I was kind of just stood there in disbelief thinking, you know, I know I've got problems. I know my life's a bit of a shit show, but this is too much for me. And sorry, I shouldn't swear. But I've really got to get myself back um, away. Like, I can't. I can't survive in Redditch, I haven't got no money. You know, I couldn't I couldn't stay there. I, I was only there for, for three, four days. And uh, it felt like an attorney already and obviously it was gonna be another week and a half before they'd have me back at the, the rehab to try again. So I made the conscious, conscious decision to come back, um, which then I linked back up with um, services in Cambridge. Um, which put me on a reduction plan um, and yeah I've obviously slowly reduced and got to where I'm at today but yeah watching obviously I hadn't seen Des's I, I knew I mean don't get me wrong like you, all, us as addicts and users or and alcoholics or whatever you want to call us people with diseases <coughs> we all put our family and loved ones through through this stuff and you don't see it at the time but even after being, you know, off to drugs especially for a long time, but even being two days, well, two, yeah, two days off the drink when I watched this video, I was like, shit, this was not fair to be putting putting people through this. And this was kind of just a bit of a follow-up video of, of my, my series of events to how Des's, you know, series of events went, which, yeah, I've, I've solely apologised for and... Hopefully, if I stay in this this right mind, I'll never have to put anyone through that worry or or hurt again. But yeah, anyway, I hope uh, this clears things up and you all don't hate me too much. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you.